Amen. Thank you. Thank you. There's a, a great joy in being able to sing those songs and, and uh, getting back to things that I knew from when I was a child and were, were blessed by and, and continue to see the value of those things. So thank you, Paul and Rhonda, for ministering to us. We appreciate that very much. I um, wanted to address some of the questions that I've received. I thought maybe I could clip through a couple of them. Um, I uh, want to try to keep up with things. This one was in 2 Samuel 6.14. David was dancing before the Lord as the ark is brought back to Jerusalem. His wife, Michal, uh, looked at, out the window and, with disdain and confronted him for what she believed was disgraceful behavior. The chapter ended with verse 23 where Michal had no child to the day of her death. My question is, did David's ardor for her cool or did the Lord punish her by closing her womb? Yes. That's what happened there. Um, I think that there was a major friction and fracture, I should say, in their relationship, um, as was seen in David taking additional wives. And I think that there were uh, evidences of the fact that his ardor for her cooled uh, based on the relationship. And also, uh, she uh, had a womb that was closed given the fact that um, her criticism of David was with reference to David's zeal, embarrassing zeal for his worship of the Lord, that he needed to make his image of greater value than the abandon with which he worshiped the Lord. And so that kind of indictment of, of, of worship itself was something that uh, cons- was, uh, resulted in her being um, barren. And so the, the blessing of the Lord was lifted from her. So next uh, question was in Matthew 24, 30, um, which I, I should probably read. Um, it, it was a statement I made that morning, and this person went online and, and asked me this question. And the uh, question uh, surrounds verse 29, but immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the sign of the son of man will appear in the sky and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send forth his angels with great trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the sky to the other. He says in Matthew 24, you mentioned that the tribes of the earth, which you said was Israel, but not sure why it wouldn't use a more specific phrase. Has this title been used for Israel elsewhere? Verse 31 mentions his elect, and I haven't heard Israel being referred to in this manner either. If this is after the tribulation, how does this coordinate? Well, I I did mention that I felt that there was a primary um, focus on Israel there in uh, when the Lord returns, and it was in the context of um, Israel uh, being delivered by the Lord, and uh, when he comes that he would um, um, bless Israel, and Israel would repent and be turned and be saved. That was the, the idea. And I reference this Matthew 24 passage as illustrative of that, Um, given the fact that when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, the tribes of the earth will mourn. And I believe that it should probably include uh, anyone on the face of the earth who is going to repent of their sin when the Lord Jesus Christ returns. But we know that primarily that's going to be Israel because anyone who has otherwise not repented will be consumed as the enemy of God. And so Israel itself is going to, to mourn. And that really is found in the basis of my comments are found in Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10, where it says, I will pour out on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication so that they will look on me whom they have pierced and they will mourn as one mourns for an only son and they will weep bitterly over him like the bitter weeping over a firstborn. And I made the comment that Israel, when Jesus Christ returns, 
the, the book of Romans says all Israel will be saved. That is, all the Jewish people alive when Jesus Christ returns will know the grace and mercy of God that turns their hearts of stone and gives them a heart of flesh. They will repent and they will mourn. And that passage out of Isaiah chapter 53 is going to be um, the script, really, that they're going to use as they pray Scripture back to God in repentance and it was a prophetic view of the heart of Israel that mourns over their sin where it says uh, he had no stately form that we should be attracted to him and, and uh, we esteemed him smitten, stricken of God and afflicted. It's going to be their prayer of repentance as they're going to mourn over their sin when God turns their hearts and they turn back to God in the fulfillment of the Abrahamic promise and in the fulfillment of the new covenant. So... Um, it does refer to Israel primarily, um, and um, Israel is referred to as the elect, and in Matthew chapter 24, we understand that what one of the things that distinguishes the rapture from the second coming is the focus of those taken and those remaining. The rapture of the church, the focus is on those taken being the righteous and those remaining being the wicked. In the second coming, those take it are the wicked and those remaining are the righteous. And so uh, we understand that the elect that uh, um, is uh, remaining on the earth will be gathered from the four corners of the earth and they will come and worship the Lord as Christ fulfills his promises to Israel when all Israel will be saved. And it's at that point where uh, the scriptures talk about the desolation uh, that will be turned that uh, where he says your house is being left unto you desolate and uh, and will be until you say blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord and that is the point at which Israel is going to say blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord when they mourn him repent of their sin and turn in faith after the tribulation as the millennial kingdom is established so that that's the answer to that question I hope that was helpful and clarifying um, this next question is, in Revelation 10, the mighty angel seems to have similar characteristics. His face was like the sun and his legs were like fiery pillars that resemble the description of Jesus in Revelation 1.15. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace. Verse 16 is, his face was like the shining sun in all its brilliance. The mighty angel also comes on a cloud in which we know Jesus is referenced to one who comes on the clouds. Who is the mighty angel? Is it Jesus? Thanks, Rick. Um, in, in Revelation uh, 10, if I turn back there, in Revelation 10, there is this reference to this, this uh, strong angel or mighty angel as some, characteristic, or as some versions of the Scripture describe him. Uh, this strong angel coming down out of heaven and uh, there is great um, um, discussion, debate, if you will, uh, as uh, this uh, strong angel. There's a couple of reasons why, despite sounding similar to Christ in some of the descriptions of Christ, which depict essentially the glory of God being displayed by the Lord Jesus Christ, that despite some of the similarities um, that exists. Well, one of the things that we need to recognize, and, and this is true in all of Scripture as a governing principle of interpretation, that similarity does not mean equation. Because certain things are similar doesn't mean that it, me it has to be the same or it is the same identity. And so this angel that is referenced, uh, I conclude, is not the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are uh, better um, teachers than I who conclude that it is the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's a split decision on this issue. Um, and by the way, I'm not alone in my understanding that it is not Christ. There is this debate as to the identity of this angel. And some do identify him as the Lord, as I mentioned. The rainbow on his head, the face shining like the sun, etc., cetera, et cetera, conjures up a recollection of the revelation of Christ as uh, this questioner said in, in Revelation 1 and so on. The voice of a lion also suggests that it's Christ because when he speaks, he speaks, uh, the scripture says, with the voice of a lion. Verse 3, he cried out with a loud voice as when a lion roars. Um, that doesn't mean it was the lion of the tribe of Judah or anything like that. It does not equate that. 
it basically means it's very loud. Um, I, when I was in Africa, I was on a um, safari in, in the um, Kruger Park, and one of the things that the, uh, the, they did is they took us out for an evening ride in this uh, kind of uh, safari-like uh, vehicle that held about 15 of us or so. And we were out, and we got out in the middle and of this wilderness, and, and uh, they turned off the engine, and we sat there with our lights off and everything, and it was very quiet. And the, and the uh, guide says, now, everybody be very quiet, and you may get a chance to hear the roaring of a lion. And, and it could be up to five miles away, you'll hear the roar of this lion. It's that loud. So we were waiting, and we didn't hear anything, uh, which I was really bummed by, but um, he was talking about how loud it is. So the roaring of a lion, as when a lion roars, it means it's just excessively loud, is, is the significance there. Not that it was the Lord Jesus who is the lion of the tribe of Judah, all those kind of things. It's not necessary. The reasons that I don't believe that this is the Lord Jesus Christ is that he is called another angel, another strong angel. And if it were the Lord, there are two words for another. Um, one is the word alas, which means another of the same kind, and the other is the word heteros, and you, you hear heterosexual, or um, um, there are other words that hetero is used for, um, heterodoxy, and, and other words that mean that it is a different kind. And if it were the Lord Jesus Christ, you would expect that the word that would be used here would be heteros, meaning an angel that's unlike the other angel, distinct. And that it's called another of the same kind suggests this is not a divine being, but this is actually an angel, a uh, created being. Um, when he swears an oath, he swears by him who lives forever and ever. And then uh, it says, uh, he swears by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things in it, and the earth and the things in it, and the sea and the things in it. And so if he's swearing by him who created all these things, Jesus created all these things, and essentially he would be swearing by himself, which is unnecessary, and so that he is swearing um, by him who created these things um, uh, it suggests that it is not Jesus Christ. The argument there to counter that is that he could be swearing by the Father because the Father is also credited by, uh, for creation, as is the Holy Spirit. All three of the personalities of the Trinity are, or persons of the Trinity are credited with creation, which is the counter to that objection. And then finally, it's unthinkable that John would go up to Jesus and give him an order. Um, in verse 9, I went to the angel telling him, give me the little book, which is an imperative. So it would be unthinkable that John would go up to Jesus and use an imperative commanding Jesus to do something that he's telling him to do. Uh, the counter to that is that sometimes um, prayers can be in the form of commands, uh, but just uber polite commands um, that uh, would be deferential to the person. But given those things, I think that the problem that this leaves is that some of the depictions are difficult to comprehend if they are not referring to Christ. And so it, it really is a, a hard thing to answer. Um, essentially, if it's an angel, which I believe it is, he is an important messenger, um, certainly, probably one of the highest of the angelic orders, possibly even an archangel that is being referenced here. But that's who I think it is. I don't think it's Jesus Christ here in Revelation chapter 10. All right? Um, and those are the questions that I have uh, trying to catch up with. And that um, caught all the way up to July 26th. So I'm inside a month now.